Welcome to the lesson on wireframing, an important step in the process of building a bubble application. So first, let's make sure we have the responsive engine enabled. We check this by seeing if we have this blue circle on the top left corner. If you do, that means you have the old engine. So let's enable the new engine by clicking on the responsive tab and clicking upgrade responsive. Perfect. Before we do any wireframe, we want to understand a little bit more about the structure of our application. So let's move over to Instagram. One way to visualize the structure of an app is by trying to find containers. For example, here on top, we have the navigation container, which is going to hold our logo, search, and icons. We also have a left container, which holds stories and posts, and a right container, which holds our profile and suggestions. And both the left container and right container are being held by a parent container, which is this gray area. One thing to note is that when we build, the navigation is to stick on top like this. With this understanding, now we can move over to the bubble and start white framing. So before I start to build my app, one thing I'd like to do is check the settings in our canvas. So double click on the page. And if you're new to the responsive engine, you're going to notice this new tab called layout. This is going to have all the settings for the new responsive engine. Now for our app, we want them to flow from top to bottom. So one way to do that is by going to the dropdown and selecting column. Column allows us to stack our elements from top to bottom. In our case, we're going to have a navigation and a container body, which hold both the left and right containers. If we have selected row, it will have stuck up from left to right. So let's select column. For our width, I know we need a thousand pixels. So I'm going to give ourselves enough space. I'm going to choose a standard size of 1280. And for our height, I'm also going to do the same number, 1280. The height number is not important because we're going to be adjusting based on the content. But for now, to give ourselves enough space, I'm going to choose 1280. So if you notice, we're a little bit zoomed in. We want to give ourselves a little bit more perspective. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. We're going to go here to grid and borders. And here at the bottom, we're going to type 80%. So now we'll have a more perspective of where we are in our canvas. So we'll start with the navigation. Remember that our navigation is to stick on top. So we're going to select floating group and we'll just drop it right here. So again, we need to specify the type of layout this container is going to be in that case, this floating group container. So we want them to flow from left to right. And the container layout that allows us to do that is pro. We want the logo to flow on the left. We want the search to be in the middle and the icons on the right, left to right. So we're going to choose row. We don't want to set a fixed width on this container. So we're going to select here, fixed width. And this is going to adjust based on the content. So it doesn't matter the minimum width. So we're going to leave this out. And I am actually going to do a fixed height for this one. A good one that I found is 80 pixels. Now, if we preview this, we're not going to be able to see it. So one way I like to do is put some color. So we're going to go to appearance. We're going to remove the style. We're going to select flat color. So we're going to be using that. Blue. Set the opacity to 10. So it's not too strong. Now, let's preview it and see what we have so far. Perfect. Okay, so now we can start to build the body container here right below the navigation. So let's go back to bubble. In this case, let's drop a group. Let's give ourselves some color. So there's a style, flat color. That way we can visualize what's going on. So now we remember this body container is going to hold both our left container and right container. So we go to layout. We want them to flow from left to right. And the way we do that is by selecting our layout to be a row. Row allows us to align our elements from left to right, whereas column is top to bottom. So we select row. We also want to center this group. One way to do that is by selecting center. Here the settings on top is for any alignment you want to do inside this group. We also want to give ourselves some space on top. 
Well, here we know it is this overlapping for navigation. So we're going to have a little margin, type 80, because that's the height we set for our navigation. Perfect. So I already did the calculations, and the Instagram app needs the body container needs 1,000 pixels. So I'm going to set a fix width of 1,000 pixels. And the height uh, is going to adjust based on the content. So we're now going to give ourselves 800, just some just enough space for us to visualize some mock data. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and put our left container and right container. So that way we can start to put some elements for our application. I'm going to, again, I'm going to give ourselves some color. And copy paste. This will be here. I, if we go back to the app, it's a little bit bigger than this right group. So again, I did some calculations behind the scenes and the width that we need is 600. But before doing that, we want to set how the layout of the elements are inside this group is going to be. So we want them to flow from top to bottom because we have stores at the top, posts at the bottom. So we're going to select column. Same thing for this one, column. And now I'm going to select, we want this to be responsive, but we want them to be a minimum of 600 pixels because it's a little bit bigger than the right container. So I'm going to select 600. And for this one, I'm going to select 320. So these are just some numbers I calculated behind the scenes. If you're really curious and want to know where these numbers are coming from, the way to do that is by going to Instagram. Opening Chrome Dev Tools, you can right click on your mouse and just click inspect. Here, you're going to go to the left and select this, select an element. This is what allows us to hover over the elements and actually select the container that holds all those elements. So once you select the main body container, click on it and go to compute it. You're going to see roughly what is the width for this. I set it to be a thousand just to give ourselves a more rounded number. But to be more specific, it's 935. And for, if we keep inspecting here, this thing called the DOM tree, we're going to find here the left container. It's about uh, 640 pixels. But for our sake, around it, 600 pixels will be just fine. And the right mouse is about 293. I said 320 because of a very standard number. Okay, so let's close our depth tools. Let's move over to bubble. Now we're going to continue the wireframing and I'm going to focus here on navigation. We need three containers, one for the logo, the search and the icons. The icons are going to be grouped together in a container. So we're going to put three containers and I want them to flow from left to right. So let's make sure this thing on top is a row. Here it's selected as a row. So I'm going to drop one container. Again, I'm going to give it some color. I already have some predefined styles. So instead of removing the style and selecting blue, Putting opacity 10. I went ahead and set a style. Here I have the label as wire. And I'm going to drop another one. So that's wire. So I'm going to drop my last group. The wire. Now, what, what I want is all of these containers to be spaced out evenly. If we go back to our app, they're sort of spaced out evenly. So we want that to happen for our app. And and the way to do that is by going to the parent container, going to layout, and selecting space between. This will be some space around each of the elements. So we want space between. If we have selected the middle, it will stack to the middle, this to the right, this to the left. So we want to select this one. Okay, so we'll continue with our build. We need some space inside this container, just like we have in the header for Instagram. We're going to do that by double clicking on the properties. Going all the way to the end, you're going to see padding, something called padding. This is how you apply some space inside the container. If you want space outside the container, you can use margin. So I'm going to apply 20 for each of this. Immediately, you can see that these containers inside this big container are overlapping the space, most likely because they're at fixed height. If we go here and let me just set them to row for now. You can see there's a min height of 55 that already is above 40, which is the little light blue area over here. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to remove that min height. And now I'm just going to let it stretch. For now, 
We're just gonna let it stretch. And we're gonna do that for each of them. Take care of them in height. Again, row. I'm picking row because once we start to build the navigation, the icons have to go in, in a row. So again, row means left to right, column top to bottom. So we need this container to be a row.